I'm good either way. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to our beautiful Sunday service. We're so glad that you're here or at home or wherever you may be watching on uh, social media. We're going to start our service by singing our opening chant. Let's all sing along. Here comes the lyrics. I see them. They're on the screen. Perfect. God is all there is. We're so glad to see you, whether you are here in this room or you happen to be in your own room live streaming this service, we welcome you. This is a wonderful place to be, North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. I am Assistant Minister Reverend Sidney, and we just want to embrace you and know that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, we are glad that you decided to be here today with us. Before we go further, I want to invite you to if you're, um, well, this is primarily if you're in the sanctuary, you people at home, you do what you need to do. We are wearing masks because we are taking care of each other. So remember, we do it like this, not like that, not like that. Nose and mouth, thank you very much. It won't go on forever, I promise. In fact, the more we do this, the less we'll have to do it, right? It's kind of a, it's an oxymoron, whatever it is. Anyway, um, and please silence your cell phones. All right, let's join together in prayer, shall we? Oh. How grateful we are, how wonderful, and how fabulous to recognize that we are here together as celebrations of God itself, that that which has created and sustained this entire universe in beauty and harmony in love and perfection saw that we were needed for that expression. So wonderful to know that we are each a creation of spirit. We are divine in our essence and limitless in our potential. And we know this about ourselves right here and right now. And we know it for each other. And from that deep awareness of our shared sacredness, I speak my word now for this day, knowing that it unfolds perfectly, that this service is already a beloved idea in the mind, the heart, the spirit, the power and presence of God. I know that that which needs to be said is done so perfectly and wonderfully through Dr. Mark, with joy, with ease, with humor. And that which needs to be heard, we are all available to spirit. We are available to guidance, to wisdom. We are receptive. And we know that as we are in this place, we are willing to be transformed, to transcend, and to be shifted in whatever ideas and perceptions are calling for us to grow, to expand, and to celebrate. I bless our music. I know that Adam is a wonderful channel, and I know that Sam and Karen are channels as well, and that we are each invited into a deep, beautiful place of awareness, understanding, and joy. So I am grateful to know that all of this is so. I give great, great, great thanks. And so it is, and together we say, amen. And so now we're going to chant. Filling me with love 
and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is, is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power and, and the glory forever. Amen. So now remain standing. We're going to sing our congregational song. join us now in spiritual practice. We're going to meditate for five minutes, and I just invite you to be where your body is. Empty your hands, empty your laps, and just simply allow your, your, your whole being to be here. Let God breathe you. Let spirit breathe by means of you, and observe that breath. Just notice it. If your mind begins to wander, just bless it. The distraction is the meditation. Just bless it, and I invite you to say, as you are, ah, as you are entering the silence, God's the love that I am. God's the love that I am. Ah, and I will bring us all back into wakefulness in five minutes.
down and in trouble and you need some loving care and nothing nothing is going going right close your eyes and think of me and soon I will Even your darkest night You just call out my name And you know wherever I am I'll come running to see you again Winter, spring, summer, or fall All you have to do is call And I'll be there, yes, yes I will You've got a friend If the sky above you Grows dark and full of clouds Oh, and that old north wind begins to blow Keep your head together And call my name out loud Soon I'll be walking by your door You just call out my name and you'll know wherever I am I'll come running to see you again winter, spring, summer or fall all you have to do is call and I'll be there Yes, yes, I will. You've got a friend. Ain't it good to know that you've got a friend? People can be so cold. They'll hurt you, desert you, break your soul, break your soul if you let them. Don't let them call.
All right, good morning. Welcome. It's good to have you here wherever you may be. So the question comes up, and people ask this all the time in our teaching. So do we create our own reality or not? Oh, wow, that is such a loaded question. It really is, because that's, the, that's a question of very high mystical truth. Do we create our own reality? Well, and, and part of that is we are not creating our own reality until we know the power of our own word and accept responsibility for how we're using that word. See, the, the energy that you put into your word directly affects your reality. Another way to say that, the, the energy that you put into your word affects your experience of life. In fact, it actually shapes your experience of life. So if you're not honest with yourself, what happens is that you actually diminish the power of your word. Now, I don't know that nobody here has done this, but I certainly have. So I will share personally here this morning. Like if I say, okay, it's the beginning of a week. This week, I am going to come hell or high water. I'm going to do yoga six days. I'm going to practice yoga six days this week. And I don't do any is what happens, okay? And th so what, what happens with that is my higher self, the universe, God says, Mark's word is not so good. You know, his word's kind of wishy-washy. He says stuff, but he doesn't mean it. He doesn't follow through. This is why we have difficulty creating our own reality. Because I can't even do yoga six times in a week. How do I think I'm going to create, you know, some greater expression in the world? Because I'm, I'm essentially pulling the rug out from under myself. I'm lying to myself when I say I'm going to do something and I don't say it. It's like, well, my word is crap. It, excuse me. But in the universe, my word is crap in the universe. I'm sorry, you know. So what's, what effect does this have? on our life, not following through with the things that we say we're going to do on a certain day. I think it has a tremendous amount to do because what it does is that sort of like depletes the power out of our word. And our words have power. We know that. We believe that in the science of mind. It says in the Bible, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word, not all the other stuff. The words. So all of the things that we create in our life start with our expression of the word. So do we mean what we say? And are we going to do what we say we're going to do? See, this is the biggest problem in communication. People don't say what they mean, and they don't do what they say. If we could just handle those two things, all of our communications everywhere in life would just be phenomenal. See, if you don't follow through with, I don't know, the laundry that you were going to do this weekend, or the walking that you were going to do around the block, your word is just, it's just wishy-washy. And you're not creating your own reality. In fact, you're the obstacle. You have become the obstacle to creating the reality that you say you want. So in scriptures it says, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. If we knew the power of our word, I think we'd be much more careful with all of our conversations, if I tell the truth. Yeah, that's it. We would just be a lot more careful in every conversation we were involved in. See, we teach in the science of mind, we teach this concept of spiritual law. And the way most of us know it is we call it karma. So you put your word out there into the universe, and what you've put out is coming back to you. It must come back to you. So if you say that life is good, Life is good is the experience that comes back to you. But if you say they are out to get me, they are out to get me comes back to you. Not, now hear this, not because they are out to get you, but because you put that into law, right? And so because you, you believe that, you've said that, and because your word has power, you've put it out there into the universe, and the universe is just like a big boomerang. Your word is like a boomerang. You whoop it out there, and it whoops back at you, and knocks you on the side of the head. So what, what do I mean by come back, comes back? Karma, karma is action, right? And so if there's an action, we teach that there's an equal and opposite reaction. So what you give out comes back. What, another way to say it, what goes around comes around. So the point of becoming more conscious and the point of developing greater awareness is that we not put stuff out there into the universal mind uh, unless we want more of that 
from the universe to come our way. See, our word does not return to us void. So through our spoken word, we are continually making laws for ourselves that the universe seeks to uphold. Right? So, example, if, so if you say something like this, this, this is just a very simple little thing. As far as this could be a law of success or a law of failure. But it's so, so here it is. If you say, well, you know, everywhere I go, I meet wonderful people. Well, you do. And isn't that a blessing? Now, that is largely my experience in life because I expect that everywhere I go, I'm going to meet nice people. Even if I'm going into a difficult situation, I tell myself, but you know, I'm sure in that situation there are going to be a few nice people there and I'm going to meet them. And it seems like I always, always do. But by the same token, if what you say to yourself, and even if you don't say it out loud, but you believe it, that someone is always out to get me, you know, someone's always out to get me, then that will be your experience. You know, when I was a kid, I, uh, I was thinking back, I, I had uh, a rabbit's foot. Yeah, I had a rabbit's foot. Uh, in fact, I had more than one, if I uh, tell the truth about it. And my belief was, as many people have believed along the way, that if you have a rabbit's foot, it's a lucky thing. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, let's be clear, it wasn't very lucky for the rabbit, was it? Um, but that's, I didn't really think about that when I was a kid. Now, but the rabbit's foot in and of itself is not lucky. It only has the power that we give it, right? Now, if I believe that carrying that rabbit's foot with me makes me lucky, then that will be more of my experience, right? But let's be clear, the power is not in the rabbit's foot. The rabbit's foot only has the power that we give it. So our spoken word and belief that it will bring us good luck. Oh, I'm gonna have a good day. I've got my rabbit's foot with me today. That creates expectancy in the subconscious mind and actually attracts a lucky situation or a good day. You see how that works? So really, it started with the word, and that word came from us. So this does not work um, as we spiritually advance, I think, and have a higher understanding of spiritual law. I know that there is no luck in the way that we were brought up to hear about luck. Now, you can keep your lucky objects, but recognize that the power back of those lucky objects, whatever they are, is the one and only power, God. And the other object gives you, and, and, that, and that that object is, it, it gives you a feeling of expectancy. So I don't know about, about you or your kids, but I remember when my nephew went through a phase where he had a lucky baseball cap. And, uh, and this, was, this, this was his, you know, uh, cherished object of all time. And he went through, it seems to me it was a number of years that he had to wear that cap. And he would hide it from my sister so she wouldn't wash it. Because he, you know, he, she might have washed out some of the luck that was in the cap. Because he would wear this cap all the time. So remember... Remember the saying, find a penny, pick it up, and all the day you'll have good luck? Yeah, so that, what that is, that's a seed of expectancy. That's just a little seed of expectancy. You know, we have a sign from the universe, and we're encouraged, right? So our, and what happens there is that our hope, that little bit of hope, has actually grown into faith. So we, but we want to remember always, always, always that God is the power back of the object. Now, is there something that happens in your life and you think, oh, this is going to be a huge disappointment. This is, this is just going to bring disappointment. There's no other way around it. All right, so we can consider that situation and say, all right, there are not two powers in the universe. We teach in science of mind that there is only one power. That power is God. Therefore, there are no disappointments. There is only a good and perfect outcome because the truth is, in the mind of God, I cannot be disappointed. So how many of us have ever avoided walking under a ladder? I just got to check in because that was really big when I was young, walking under a ladder. And then, you know, I would spend years doing technical work in theater, hanging lights and stuff, and you're constantly around ladders. So at some point, I remember uh, my freshman year in college, uh, that that had to go. This whole idea of walking under a ladder is unlucky. I just realized this is really not going to serve me because I was moving ladders and climbing up and down them every day in college. It's like, no, this is, this, this, I just, just got to let that whole ladder thing go. And you know, it has served me well. 
Yeah, it has. It, it really, really has. Remember, it's, it always comes back to spirit, to God, to truth, to consciousness is the power. Right? Uh, if you are afraid that something is going to be unlucky for you, then you've gone into the realm of believing that there's two powers, okay? That there's good and evil instead of one power, which is God, which is absolute, which is only good. There can be no opposing power to God. So do you really want to let an open ladder limit your life? And if it's not a ladder, a rabbit's foot, or whatever it is. No, we don't. See, your fear of ladders will actually draw more ladders to you. This is what Job said, the thing I fear has come upon me. You know, and if you start to obsess about, I can't walk under a ladder, I can't walk under a ladder, and you can replace ladder with whatever, whatever the thing is, you will just notice that more and more of them are coming to you because what you focus on increases. Energy goes where energy flows. If I am all about avoiding ladders, the, only, the universe only hears ladders, 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 right? So fear of ladders attracts the ladders. You get the point. The forces of the universe are always working. Now, we don't realize, though, that those forces of the universe that are working are working because we are actually pulling the strings, for lack of a better word. See, there is a vibration, a frequency, in all of our words. Like I say all the time, everything you do carries the consciousness with which you do it. Right? So our words always have a vibration, a frequency, an energy about them. And so what we give voice to, what we give voice to, we begin to attract. So if you continually speak, think, visualize, give voice to something, say dis-ease, some form of dis-ease, that's one way to help attract it. That's one way to help create it. That's one way to help bring it into your experience by thinking about it and talking about it and complaining about it and holding every person you ever meet in the course of a day captive and sharing it with them. And on and on and on. Think about this. How often do you find yourself in conversations about what you do not want? Hmm. That's ugly, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's like, oh my gosh. I, I mean, I, I find myself in a lot of conversations where I have to like, nope, pull, just, I mean, I, I've got to pull back. I've got to pull back. I've got to rectify that. See, talking with friends and before you know it, it's just a regular organ recital. Yes, it is. Yeah. Everyone has, you know, what's wrong, and everybody's outdoing each other on what's wrong, and what's breaking down, and what's not working anymore, and how bad it's getting. So you say, well, can I not talk about my health? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Yes, you can talk about your health in a way that creates more health for you. Absolutely. Talk about your challenges but talk about them with a practitioner, somebody who can help you do something constructive about them, right? Rather than just hollering into the wind, I'm so sick, you know, and the wind says, yes, you are. <laughs> right? But with your practitioner, the practitioner is not going to say, oh, my God, you poor dumb thing. You are sick. You are broke. You are lonely. Yeah, that's the way God made it for you. Your practitioner's not going to do that. You work with a practitioner so they can help lift your thought, lift your consciousness up so you can heal and move forward in your life. Now, that's very different, sharing what's going on with somebody who's going to help you heal and lift you up than sharing it with somebody who's going to try and outdo you, right? You know, it's like, oh, yeah, you think you got it bad? Well, let me show you this. You know, and we all start showing our scars and our wounds. Once you know the truth, though, you can't be too careful with your words. Old metaphysics used to say something like this. Only use your words for three things, to heal, to bless, and to prosper. Well, that was pretty great. I like that. You know, because what you say about others is what you're saying about yourself into the universal mind. What you wish for another, you are actually telling the universe, this is what I'm wishing for me. Bring it on. Hmm. But curses, like chickens, also come home to roost. Yeah, they do. So if you curse someone else, and you curse the traffic, and you curse the weather, and you curse those people way over there, blah, 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 
that's going to come home to roost. We know that dis-ease, any form of dis-ease in the body has a mental correspondent. And in order to heal the body, we have to first heal the soul. This is what we're about in the science of mind. In science of mind, the soul is the subconscious mind. And it has to be saved from wrong thinking from limited thinking, fearful thinking, separative thinking. So in the 23rd Psalm, we read these words. These are great. He restoreth my soul. The subconscious mind gets to be restored how? With right ideas, with correct kind of thinking. Like Jesus said, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. I think that's the highest spiritual truth he gives anywhere, that I and the Father are one. That's like saying I'm one with God. Right? I and the Father are one. So that is the that so so here we are. We are one with the realm of perfect ideas. Right? We are made in God's image and likeness. We're given dominion over all created things. You know, our, our mind, our body, our affairs. We're supposed to have dominion over all of these things. So it may be that the sickness and the unhappiness that we experience is because of a violation of the law of love, right? So Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, you know, that you love God with all your heart and everything you got and love your neighbor as yourself. So what that is, that's like a condensation of the 10 commandments. He just brings all 10 down to one big one, right? Love God and love your neighbor, right? So whatever the question, it must be that more love is the answer. Love fulfills the law. And remember, whenever we put love into the law, something good always happens. It has never been I put love into the law and something horrible happened. That's not the way it works because the law responds by corresponding. So if you put love into the law, what are you going to get back? Love in some greater way. See, I believe that unforgiveness is the most prolific cause of people's problems, whether it's disease in their body, or trouble in their work, whatever it is, you know, that unforgiveness. So I now know when I sit down and do my prayer work, when I'm meditating, I always have to check in with, okay, God, who do I need to forgive? Is there anybody? And, and I know if nobody comes up, I'm in trouble, really, you know, because there are always, always people to forgive, and that, of course, includes ourselves. And, and as I've said so many times, forgiveness is never a one-time deal. It's process work. We're just going to be doing it forever, just like we're going to be brushing our teeth and combing our hair and taking a shower and doing forgiveness. We're going to be doing it forever, I believe, at least as long as we're here. If we're experiencing a lack of harmony somewhere in the outer world, in a relationship, in our job, with our health, you know, it, sh it is sure that there is a lack of harmony somewhere inside of us. Something, if something's unsettled out here, it's because something is unsettled in here. You know? In the opening of Waiting for Godot, Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, he says, I have found the enemy, and he's within. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so true. That's so true. You know, because the things that other people say and do outside of us, I think, do not compare to the awful things that I hear people say and the things that I see people do in their own lives. So goodwill is like, like a mantle of divine protection uh, uh, around the one who sends that goodwill out. You know, so I think love and goodwill destroy the enemies within ourself. You know, therefore, we have no enemies on the outside. Now think about that. If I'm loving and I have goodwill toward everybody, if that were really true for me, I would have no enemies. So think about that. Think about that for a second, that there's nobody we need to go at in any way. Right? So the answer, I think, to that difficult question of do we create our own reality is yes, and that becomes more true for us as we become more conscious. As we become more aware, I think we have a better grasp on creating our reality because we really understand that what I'm creating has to do with two things, what I'm putting out 
and the word that I'm speaking. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward, just taking a moment. Become still. Remember that right where we are, God is. The place whereon we stand is holy ground. We are surrounded and filled with God's infinite spirit, a spirit of love and intelligence and creativity. The fullness, the allness of God is right where we are. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that our word is a word of love, it's a word of power, it's a word of creativity, it's a word of joy, it's a word of healing. I know that what each and every one of us put out into the universe is good. It's good all the time. And therefore, that same good and increased comes back to us. We are open, willing, receptive vessels for all that spirit has. And I know that all that spirit has is absolutely good. It could not be any other way. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends and parents and children. We see them in our mind's eye and we surround them with a mantle of God's love, God's peace, God's healing energy knowing that the truth about them is so much greater than any seeming condition. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So those situations that are just begging for our attention, we send an energy of love and light and law and healing into those situations, blessing all people involved, no one exempted that the heart that we are using is the heart of God, and that heart is so big it includes everyone, everyone. We bless our church, and we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together. So take a moment right now, just this brief moment, and be the presence of peace within yourself, within your own consciousness. Be peace and emanate that peace out from you, out into the world that we live in. So because there is nothing but an energy of love and peace within each of us, I know that that's what emanates from us and it blesses the world. And so with a grateful heart, I give thanks that this is so. We bless our church, all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths. I know we are so blessed by being together today that there is healing and raising up for everyone. I say thank you, God, and so it is. Together we all say amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. For all that I have, I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to put your gift over your heart, and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. and you are love. We all are love, right? All right, and love always finds a way. Come on, y'all. You can join me. Come on, let's join us. Feeling 
like you can go on Just believe that love will find a way Tell me how you go through changes Time feel like it's passing by Don't you worry, love will find a way I see the tears you cry And I see the pain in your eyes So many times you were so lonely Just to hold on to Always know that love Will find a way Is it hard This life you're living Does the world seem So unkind Always know that love Will Find a way. Some say we lost, we lost our way. Some say the world has gone astray. But if you know where you go, there's nothing you can do. Cause problems will come. They will leave you The world would try to deceive you But the truth will always be in your soul a life you're living once again Karen on flu does the world seem so unkind just believe that love will find a way say love will find a way love will find a way are you searching for love love will find a way share your love with your brother your sister, love will find a way, love will find a way, love will find a way. Bless you. Have a wonderful week. <laughs> Love will find a way. And I think that you need to find the way to get his music. And, it's, and he made it really easy. And let's just go right to that. A-E-J, J-A-Y-E dot com. A-E-J-A-Y-E dot com is where we get your music. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh.
Diane, I mean, sorry, not Diane. You're there, but, and we appreciate, we appreciate all that you're doing. Karen and Sam, play that funky music. Thank you very much. <laughs> all righty. If this is the first time that you have been able to visit us, as you leave the sanctuary, take a little left turn. We have a welcome, a visitor's table, a welcome table with all sorts of information, including a packet designed just for you to take home with lots of information. I believe we even have a CD of a special talk that's been selected for you. There's a lot going on. We have groups, we have wonderful stuff. Even our brand new Garden Angels are having a fundraiser today. And there are some really, really cool things that you can buy to help. We, we're planting more flowers. This is good, right? <laughs> now, for all the ways that you can make donations to our church, go to nhcrs.org slash give. You can also text the word give to 818-457-3419. But we made it even easier. Everybody hold up your bulletin, right? On the back, there's a QR code. If you just pick up that beautiful little cell phone that you're addicted to like I am and you frame it there with a the camera, then tap on it. It'll take you right where you need to be. You can do recurring giving or a one time. It's so easy. So we invite you to do that. Prayer with a practitioner is available after this service, both in person and on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, then pop over to Zoom. You can get some prayer. Our practitioners, this is their superpower. This is their superpower to know the truth about you when you're in those times where, when you have forgotten the divine truth about yourself. And they will see who you are and remember who you are and speak that word and you will be so blessed by the experience. So if you need prayer after the service, please come up to the front and they will lovingly pray with you. Wednesday evening, this Wednesday we will have no service because we have Good Friday on, guess what, Friday. <laughs> and we are doing a service at six o'clock on Friday, our Good Friday service, 6 o'clock, and then our dinner at 7, WWJE, what would Jesus eat? <laughs> it's a fundraiser. I believe we might still have a few tickets. Yes, we do. Not a lot, though. So $35, it's a four-course Middle Eastern-ish dinner and prepared for you by the amazing stellar celebrity chef, Dr. Mark Vieira. <laughs> yeah. um, so I hope that you will come to that. Next Wednesday, a week from this, on the 20th, we come back and I think we're going to retool the Wednesday night service and start, we're going to do some different things. Surprise. <laughs> a deer in the headlight. Sam Krieger, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> and my topic on the 20th is resurrected. Now what? <laughs> All right, today we have Circle of Healing at 1 o'clock in the sanctuary with Mary Catherine O'Hart. I hope that you will come and participate in that. This is a beautiful sacred healing service. She will guide you through um, the whole process involving your chakras and your deeper self. So I hope that you will join her. It's also on Zoom. Zoom, by the way, all of our Zoom links can be found on our website. You just go on to nhcrs.org, scroll down, and you're going to find the links. Uh, we have a grief support group today that also meets on Zoom only at 1 o'clock, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, and it's really, really nurturing and healing. Let's see, I've done that, I did that, I did that. Oh, Easter Sunday, April 17th. If you have kids, if you know kids, um, if you are a grandparent, an aunt, a mom, a dad, a caregiver, whatever you are, we're having our Easter egg hunt. It's in between services on Easter Sunday. So... Right after the 945 service, the kids come out, the eggs will have been hidden, the kids come out and flash, it's gone. So be there quickly so you can get your pictures. And it's so much fun. We haven't done this in two years. So we're so grateful and so excited. So I hope that you will um, come and, and watch and celebrate our kids. If you want to participate, we are accepting those little plastic eggs filled with candy. Bring those to the office. We would love to have them. And, you know, here's the thing. If they don't get eaten, I know some office staff that will eat them. And anyway, nothing gets wasted here. Um, if you made a Journey of the Heart Pledge this year and have not picked up your special gift, please visit the office um, or contact Doreen, by the way. Okay, Zoom virtual patio before and after all of our services. Zoom meditation every morning, uh, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 to 8.15.
There's so much going on here. I'm just going to shut up now because if you go to our website, you're going to just see it all. And we're glad you're here. I'm going to stop talking and we're going to sing the peace song. Please rise. <laughs> So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.